If you found this video, you're trying to make sure you've got the right guys in your starting lineup. And lucky for you, I'm going to be going over all of my top start sits of the week in this video right now, as well as going through all the matchups so everybody can get something. If you're feeling generous, go ahead and drop a like on this video. It would mean the absolute world to me, but let's not waste any time. If you want to stick around to the end, there is a list of defenses we can pick up off the waiver wire to start this week that can actually win us a league just by themselves. I don't know how people are still letting them slip on the waiver wire, but the number one guy we need to be starting this week is Calvin Ridley. And I know this one can be a little bit controversial because he's put up single digit points in his last three games. He has not been very consistent. And despite being the wide receiver 36 on the year, he is the wide receiver for an expected points per game. This has to do with yardage from the quarterback, all of his targets, everything, touchdowns. He got a touchdown called back last week that should have been a touchdown, but it wasn't. He is the wide receiver four in those expected points. Now, are expected points fantasy points? No, not necessarily. So it's really not fair to say that he is the wide receiver four, but it means that he has value and he has upside. Christian Kirk is obviously out for the season. And now we have Zay Jones being doubtful for week 16. You can put your house on that he probably won't play this week. And that really raises his floor and safety because it's going to be the first week that he plays with no Christian Kirk and Zay Jones at the same time. They've both missed time this season. Now he gets both of them out of the offense. He's the clear cut wide receiver one. He has been in targets as well. We also have Trevor Lawrence trending towards being fully healthy for this game. He should start. He should be fine. He's projected for just shy of 300 yards, 278 to be exact. And the Jaguars are ninth in passing attempts. And all that means is that he has the opportunities and the targets and everything in between to be viable this week. He's just been really unlucky. And on top of that significant team stuff and things he can control and this offense can control, he gets a great matchup against the Buccaneers this week who have allowed the second most points to opposing wide receivers this year consecutively. They have been bad and they continue to be bad over the air against the pass. They're also first in explosive plays allowed this year. That's also where Calvin really gets a lot of his upside and benefit from. Down the field, touchdowns, big plays, whatever. Again, a really positive thing to see for him. Carlton Davis is also a positive in fantasy points allowed and the secondary DB that could be shadowing in and out is even worse. So, I mean, there really is no bad matchup team-wise as well as player matchup-wise. Because you always could make the case that, okay, well, maybe it's a good matchup, but he could get blanketed by a really good DB. No, it's just good all around. This game has a projected scoring total of 43 and a half points. It's not super high, but it's also not super low. It's about in the middle. And it is Calvin really at the end of the day. He might carry a little bit of risk. I guess that's just the gambler in him. But we got no Zay Jones. We got no Christian Kirk. It's a really good spot. If you're going to start him, this is the week. As for the other guys, we're going to be starting all the other regular Jaguars as well. Trevor Lawrence, obviously, if he plays, we're going to be starting Travis Etienne. And also, Parker Washington is a decent start if you do have him. If you picked him up off flavors, it's probably not too late if you want to get him. He's moving into that wide receiver two spot with no Kirk and Zay Jones. And it really does open up for him for the same reason that it opens up for Christian Kirk. He's going to be faced against the secondary DB. Again, he's worse than Carlton Davis. He'll get a safe target share with the amount of passes and yardage Trevor Lawrence is projected to get. It's a positive matchup, all of this that we already talked about before. But if you have any specific questions, maybe you do want to go ahead and start him. Comment any questions you have below about start sits, whatever, anything fantasy. I will answer 100% of them before this week's tip off. You guys know I always do. I love answering your questions. I'd love to see you guys in the comments. So just any question, let me know. I will answer it. Rashad White, again, must start. Even if you're in a four man league, the Jaguars lie the fourth most points to receiving running backs this year. And he has been absolutely amazing in the receiving game. Baker, you can start all the receivers. You can start Chris Godwin again is ruled in healthy. It seems like he's questionable every week, but you can be starting him just off volume alone. But a guy we can and should be sitting this week is Ty Chandler, somebody that's been pretty decent as of late simply because of his usage. And that's why he has been viable. His volume is dependent on the game script and he's had some favorable game scripts over the past few weeks. But now he gets a matchup against the Lions who allow the fourth least points to opposing running backs. And they also allow the fourth least points to receiving running backs in the air out of the backfield. So there really is no upside here for him. The only real upside you could give him is that this game does have a 47 point total, which is one of the higher of the week. It's not the highest. It's on the higher side though, but it really comes down to a good defense playing a terrible quarterback and I don't really want to be on the terrible quarterback sides of things. Obviously, you're going to be starting Justin Jefferson regardless. Addison can be a decent start. Again, we saw last week he can be viable. He is more risky. I'd keep him at a flex play. We're starting all of these guys on the lines, except for maybe Goff. I am a little bit worried about him because he's fine against the Blitz and pretty much every defensive coverage known to man. But against cover two, he is really, really bad. He's the quarterback 33. Ask me how that's possible. There's only 32 starting quarterbacks in the league. I don't know. It's true. It's just the facts. He's terrible against cover two. You can't still start him if you got him. He did have a good week last week, but just know that's a thing. That's a fact. And he does carry some risk. Very quickly, I'll talk about the Chiefs and Raiders matchup just simply for Rasheed Rice. This dude has been absolutely on fire as of late, and that's not going to stop. Let me explain. This dude has been exploding. He's the clear wide receiver one with Patrick Mahomes at quarterback. That has to be somewhat valuable. And it has been. He's been averaging 10 targets a game over his last four. His snap share has been increasing every single week. He saw 92 last week, 85 
the week before that, 69 the week before that, 64 the week before that. It just keeps going up every single week and it's not stopping. And his receiving projections have also been going up every week as well. It was at five, then six, and now it's at seven for this week. That is by far the season high. And that's a really good high receiving number if you're projected, expected to get seven catches. That's really good. Better than Stefan Diggs, probably. He's a top 10 receiver this week. Don't treat him as anything other than that. Isaiah Pacheco can also be started. Obviously, we're probably going to be starting Mahomes anyways, even if he has been a little bit disappointing. Devontae Adams is kind of a risky play for me. The Chiefs run some of the most too high safety in the NFL, so that means we're going to have Sneed shadowing Devontae Adams. It's not a great matchup, but again, it is Devontae Adams, so we kind of do have to be putting him in our starting lineup just for the upside anyways, but I do want you guys just to be a little bit hesitant and just know that it is a fact. At the very least, he's worth a flex play. You still got to be starting him unless you're in like an eight-man league. But guys that we cannot start and a guy that I'm very hesitant about, and it hurts me to say if you see that jersey back there, is Terry McLaurin. And this is just simply because of the matchup and this team has been on the decline as of late and I just don't want to trust it. If you guys play fantasy football, you know the Jets is the hardest defense to go against for fantasy wide receivers, quarterbacks. They allow the least fantasy points to those positions. DJ Reed, Sauce Gardner, they're absolutely no joke. The commanders are projected to score some of their lowest points of the entire season. Sam Howell will start this week. I could see this game going very, very south and he could get pulled for Jacoby Brissett, put him in, see what he can do. They are four and 10 at the end of the day, but he's only projected for 208 passing yards this week, an insanely low total he's averaged 115 over the past two weeks and his volume has been completely cut in half with that being said he is still the wide receiver one so the targets are gonna have to go somewhere i haven't ranked about where chuba hubbard is a flowers chris godwin nico collins now that cj stroud is out so he is technically still startable but the matchup is just really making me scared and i don't have a very high expectation for him like we did have last week against the rams who are one of the more positive pass defenses but brian robinson is out so obviously we're not gonna be starting him but that just makes this offense so one-dimensional antonio gibbs we're not starting him. I'm really not starting anybody else with confidence on this team. We're going to be starting Garrett Wilson again as well. The commanders have the worst defense in the NFL. They allow the most points to opposing wide receivers. Yes, we have Trevor Simeon in at quarterback playing, but I'm convinced you could pass against the commanders and do pretty decent. But T Higgins is a guy that seems pretty obvious. We got to be starting him this week. He went off last week by far, probably his best game of the season. And now we have Jamar Chase ruled out for this week, which makes him the clear cut wide receiver one. Is this some amazing offense like it was with Joe Burrow? No, but a wide receiver one is a wide receiver one matchup wise it's not insanely tough they do have a decent defense but they allow some of the most explosive plays in the nfl again top three and the steelers do have some injuries on defense joey porter is going to be playing on t higgins which is a little bit tough because we have no jamar chase anymore not a super high game total but again wide receiver one the targets have to go somewhere jake browning's projected for about 250 passing yards but because of that we're not really going to be starting tyler boyd with a whole bunch of confidence he can be started i wouldn't put him at anything more than a flex play he is still risky and with a perfect world we're not going to be starting any of these Steelers players with Mason Rudolph under center. I just, ugh, it's disgusting. Speaking of not being in love with anything, the Broncos wide receivers are a squad that I'm really not liking this week, and I'm putting out of my starting lineup if I do have the chance. But don't get me wrong, the touchdowns have been insane for Quentin Sutton. He's only had four games without a touchdown this year. That has to be some kind of record. It's absolutely crazy. Only the wide receiver 22, despite having the most touchdowns and being healthy all season, he's still not a top 10 wide receiver. He's only projected for about three or four receptions against the Patriots this week, and a lot of my uncertainty with these receivers comes from Russell Wilson and the source. I'm really not expecting him to do a lot and have an Excel game. The upside isn't there. If you're looking for a quarterback that's going to give you 20 plus points or at least has the opportunity and upside to do it, don't make it Russell Wilson. Take him out of your starting lineups if you're looking for that. The Patriots are bottom five in points allowed to quarterbacks. Obviously, Jerry Judy's a risky play. We're not going to be starting him anyways. If you made it to the fantasy football playoffs, you probably don't need him. Javante is my RB30. Again, not super in love with him. He does have upside though, just a little bit risky of a floor with this offense. Zeke, going to be started. Everybody else from this offense not too in love with. But Jonathan Taylor is a startable guy in week 16. He has been ruled in. He's officially off the injury report, 100% good. The only thing and drawback you could have here is that he does get a matchup against the Atlanta Falcons who do allow the second least points to opposing running backs this year. And it is his first game back off injury, but considering that the injury was just a thumb injury, he got it surgically fixed, whatever. It's not like a hamstring to where he has to be slowly put back in to not get injured again. It's just a thumb. Like it's really not that big of a deal. If anything, he's maybe at more risk of fumbling or something but he's not going to be on like a snap count he was ruled in just a couple hours ago and he's already projected for 70 rushing yards he does have the receiving upside as well we know he does you might as well throw him into your starting lineup at least at a flex play he's worth it if you've made it to the fantasy playoffs he's probably better than the filling guy you're using anyways we're also starting michael Pittman, of course if you're asking me how he's playing after the absolutely brutal hit that he had last week i'm not going to play it it'll probably get this thing taken down I don't know, but he's healthy. He's playing. Lead target share. He's cleared concussion protocol. As for Bijan, it's a bit of a weird situation because last week he absolutely just dumped 
everywhere and he didn't give us a good game at all but this is a week where i think we can just maybe start him you don't always just have to stick to your stars in these kind of matchups when narratives do change but in this case, we kind of have to. The Colts allow the third most points to opposing running backs. It is a really soft spot for him to go. He does have that receiving upside that does keep him a bit safer. Taylor Heineke is starting for the Falcons this week. I guess that kind of makes him better and has a little bit more upside because this offense is elevated just a little bit with him, even though it is a little risky. He was decent in the game and a half that Taylor Heineke was playing. He got receiving work. He got a good amount of usage. So the quarterback change isn't really something I'm worried about. It's more of just will arthur smith give him the ball it's a great matchup i don't see how they can't do it by no means is he like a must start get him in your lineups but a flex play's gotta be the right move but as for drake london he's a fringe start again it depends on your other guys make sure to comment any questions you have while you're watching this video i will go answer them but as for the giants on christmas day i don't really want to be starting any of these guys again i have saquon as my rb19 he's the only guy that i'm even considering starting but even then he has an insanely high amount of risk this eagles defense is nothing to be played with they allow bottom five points to the running back position in fantasy at least he's gonna be very reliant on his volume and hoping this game stays somewhat close and volume in the receiving game as well i think the receiving role is really the only thing that's going to keep him above a regular start but this game could get really out of hand really quick and that's one thing i do worry about the eagles are projected to win by 12 points not a close game whatsoever and the reason i am kind of worried about this is because you have saquon barkley who is kind of an injury prone guy his contract isn't 100 percent guaranteed for what he wants if this game does get really out of hand i see a world where they take him out split some usage with some other running backs they're not playing for anything they're not in a playoff spot and this is the time of season where you kind of have to worry about that and what the narrative is and for that same reason darren waller is a bit of a risk as well i have him about my tight end 13 he does have upside but he does have a really low floor he's the only capable pass catcher on the team I think the Eagles should be aware of that and at least try to blanket him, but the Eagles secondary and pass game really isn't that hard for fantasy points allowed. So you can start him, but by no means is he like a top five, top seven tight end that you can put in and start. He's about the Hunter Henry range. And I did want to talk about Aaron Jones as well. His season has been an absolute roller coaster. If you've had him on your team, maybe you trade for him. He's been up and down, but now he's only started in 49% of leagues, which is a lot lower than it should be considering the matchup that he gets. It's a great spot for him against the Panthers who allow the second most points to opposing running backs. They have been an absolute run funnel the entirety of the season. They cannot stop the run. If AJ Dillon does not play, he is still questionable, kind of trending towards being available. I want to be starting Aaron Jones in every single league. If AJ Dillon does play, I'm a little bit hesitant. I'd put him at a flex play still just because of the matchup. But I really do hope that A.J. Dillon doesn't play this week for our Aaron Jones' sake. He's going to smash if he doesn't. It's not a great matchup for Jordan Love over the top. They allow some of the least points to opposing wide receivers and quarterbacks. And there's no reason why they don't lean on the run game to get them going. What a lot of teams do is they pass early, get a lead, and then just completely run the ball down the Panthers. Reed is a decent flex play if he does start. I'm not starting Wicks. Chuba is a decent guy as well. Just off his volume, 25, 25, 24 carries over his last three games. That is insanely high. It is a bit of a tougher matchup against the Packers this week but again volume alone you can start him again only as a flex guy if you need it I have him as an RB2 maybe high-end RB3 Adam Thielen again you can start he's projected for about five catches this week comment any questions you've got I'll give my insight depending on who you guys are deciding to start between and if you have some quarterback questions or you're trying to start the right guy make Justin Fields the starting quarterback in your lineup right now two QB leagues four man leagues i don't care put him in your starting lineup there's a real case he can finish as a top two quarterback this week he gets an amazing matchup against the cardinals who allow the seventh most points to opposing quarterbacks this week and it goes deeper than just the points allowed in that sense fields hasn't had many games this year where he can be comfortable and just do his thing the last game that happened was probably against the commanders in week five they're calling more design runs for him it makes him a lot more of a safer guy they're also 30th in pressure rate the cardinals are so he's gonna have time he's gonna be able to go through his progressions just have a game where he can dictate the flow in the process which is what he needs to be good he gets the advantage they're ranked 16th in the past they're also 24th against rushing quarterbacks which is very favorable it's a home game the game total is projected 44 points it's not super high but it's definitely not low but now for some weak winning defenses if you've made it this far in the video you are a true og i love you for that so i want to get you guys the right defenses i literally love this part of the video the bears are the number one defense high risk ish high reward not really they're only rostered in 10 percent of leagues it went up to 25 after this week but what are we doing people it's 
should be so much higher than this. They've had 15 or more points in their last three matchups. They lead the NFL in takeaways since week 11, and they are the defense five since week 10. They have been torching the NFL, and then with Justin Fields, they get a great matchup against the Cardinals, who are a bottom five offense. They are terrible. Every single offensive metric they have is one of the worst. It's a safe play because of the matchup, and it's a high upside play because of how they've been doing just on their own. But if you don't want them, maybe you think it's risky because, I mean, it's the Bears. How good have they really been over the past couple of years? Maybe it's just a stigma, whatever you want to do. They're a great start, but if you don't want them, go ahead and get the Panthers, who are probably the safest defense of this video that are still on the waiver wire. They're only rostered in about 50% of leagues, so maybe a little bit more than you'd hope, but still go ahead and make sure they're still on there. And if they're available, pick them up. They get a matchup against the Panthers, who are one of the worst offenses in the NFL. We've been targeting the defenses that play them because they consistently project some of the most points. Their offensive line is absolutely terrible. There's a very high possibility of a huge amount of sacks. Bryce Young isn't good. Whose fault is it that this team only has two wins? I don't know. I don't care, but it means fancy points and low scoring, which also means more fancy points. This is a great, safe defense, but it might be a little bit too late for this last defense. I'm going to give it to you guys just in case when we were talking about it last week in the waiver ads, all this kind of stuff, they're only rushing in 30% of leagues. Now they're all the way up to 74. I hope you guys got them while you still can. If you didn't just go ahead and double check because they're quite literally a week winning defense. They are the Denver Broncos. They get a matchup against the New England Patriots this week. They're projected. I have them projected for about 12 fancy points. That's a flex guy. That's like a wide receiver too, just sitting at our defense position. The Patriots are an absolutely terrible offense. I don't care if they've been playing decent as of late. They make a lot of mistakes. Bailey Zappi, all of these quarterbacks are projected and expected to at least throw one interception a game. Stardom, they're a great defense on their own. They have one of the best pass protectors defenses in the NFL. Go ahead and get them. But that finishes off this video. If you've made it this far, I seriously appreciate you guys. I thank you so much for sticking with me for the whole season. It's been a long season, a great season. It means the world to me that you guys are on this video. I'll see you guys next season. I'll be posting over the off season. If you guys do want to watch those videos, it would mean the world to me. Hope you guys get these championship wins and I'll see you guys in the next video.